While contestants strive to present their best creations to the judges, not every dish can be a winner. And what this contestant did left the judges confused. On the first day of Master Chef, the top 19 chefs were challenged with the mystery box challenge. And this time, all the chefs except Natasha Kerjak and Savannah Sturges were given the invention test to fight for their place. Langoustine happened to be the main component, and the contestants just had 60 minutes to pump out a delicious dish. While everyone was playing with their creativity, Howard's creativity was put into question by Chef Ramsay. He decided to poach the beautiful Langoustine with a champagne vinaigrette containing strawberries. Hmm, was he trying to make a dessert out of it? Well, I can't tell, but let's see what the judges thought. When it was finally time to judge the dishes, I had a feeling that Howard's dream would be hanging by a thread. And well, when he presented the dish, all I could think about was what kind of rabbit food he was serving. I mean, 60 minutes for a damn salad? Was he growing a garden in there? Well, I could tell that Chef Ramsay was stunned by this dish and had a pretty valid question to ask. Did you disappear into the library for half an hour? No, I did not. I mean, like seriously? What the hell was he doing for the last 60 minutes? Salads don't nearly take that long to make. I see no vinegar. This is a joke. Howard left Chef Ramsay speechless with the creation that he presented. And well, Chef Ramsay was so disappointed that he didn't even want to give it a taste. I'm shocked. In fact, I'm not even going to eat it. Well, that was a pretty expected reaction, but he wasn't the only one who was disappointed. While the famous chef just walked away, what Judge Joe did next was shocking. This is a waste of our time. If you thought that was brutal, then hold on because Chef Ramsay wasn't done ripping Howard a new one yet. But if that's the best you can do, then you are in the wrong kitchen. Oh, I bet Howard didn't see that one coming. But this next contestant was busy eating his own dish rather than listening to the judges' feedback. What exactly do you think might happen to this guy? Well, I could assure you that this one isn't going to go down very well. Meet Christian Collins, a stay-at-home dad who knew how to cook but had an extremely cocky attitude. One Reddit user couldn't understand why Christian was hated so much even though he was good at cooking. But being competent at cooking isn't the only thing that matters. However, another one pitched in and listed out different reasons to hate Christian. This included being disrespectful and pompous, among other things. Well, I simply can't agree with this comment more since Christian wasn't only disrespectful towards his fellow contestants, but also towards the judges. You see, on the 11th day of season 2, Christian miserably failed to make a good impression. But what's important to note is that it wasn't because of his dish, but rather because of his actions. Let me help you recall this drama. The top 11 chefs were given not one, but two mystery boxes. One was regular sized, and the other one was fairly large. While the regular one had vegetables, the large one had everyone's favorite protein, lobster. As Christian started working, he accidentally broke his food processor and went into a rage frenzy since he had little time left. Given the situation, I understand that being calm would be challenging, but Christian turned into a mad monkey. Can I get some new pasta, please? While he got some help getting some pasta, his dish wasn't among the top three. You are not in the top three. There was just such an anger with your cooking. Honestly, this outcome was pretty unfair. Christian neither had his mind nor his heart in the food that he'd prepared. Knowing how Christian was, I knew he wouldn't be happy with whoever got called to the front. And quite expectedly, he had something really nasty to say. Jennifer sucks. I don't think she has as much food knowledge as I do. This is when he started acting like a complete ass. Listening to the feedback judges have for others is pretty important because you never know if it might help you. However, Christian had other plans in mind. Dude didn't give a damn about what was happening around him and completely forgot about something. The judges always have an eye on everyone during their time on the show. I'm gonna personally come over there and throw you out of here. You show no respect and I'm not gonna deal with it. The funny thing about this whole situation was Christian's expression. He looked like he was being chastised for nothing. But we all know that isn't true at all. And honestly, this wasn't the first time Christian was berated for his attitude. But what makes it even worse was that he never learned from it. He just carried on with his goddamn snarky attitude. In an interview with Cleek Clack, Christian admitted to being a douchebag. However, he also added something Jennifer said about his arrogance in an interview. Christian said, I was a douchebag sometimes. I was trying to win. I was a little upset. I read some interviews with Jennifer Bem, the winner, after the fact, and she was kind of throwing me under the bus. I mean, what are you, mad that you won? There is no need to throw me under the bus after a show like that. She basically said something to the effect of, is Christian really that arrogant? 
And she goes, I wish I could say Christian isn't like that all the time, but he is that and worse. Well, I think Jennifer just stated some facts and once again, Christian was just being high-handed. But this next contestant pissed off a judge by acting like an entitled child when the judges were just giving him some feedback. However, would he be able to get away with it? I sure hope not, but Christopher Liu, a restaurant manager, showed the world that he definitely had some skill. However, much like the other contestant, he was sadly disliked for his poor attitude. One Reddit user, who disliked Christopher's better-than-you attitude, called him out for being entitled. What happened is, on the 12th day of Season 6, the top 10 chefs were first given a team challenge. But after the blue team lost the challenge, they had to fight in order to stay back in the pressure test. Not every dish turns out to be perfect all the time, but one could always improve their skills with the right direction and by implementing feedback. However, in Christopher's case, instead of just taking in the feedback, he chose to show some attitude. During the pressure test, the home cooks had 25 minutes to make an appetizing gnocchi for the judges. However, Christopher failed to serve one. Your dumplings are definitely more on the under-seasoned side. Okay. He was already showing some attitude since Christina gave him some constructive criticism. Every time he said, okay, I felt like telling him to change his tone and sound more polite. He just sounded so dismissive. When Ramsay came to taste his dish, he wasn't happy with how the dish looked. The gnocchi looked so disappointing that the famous chef was mad at him for ruining something so mouthwatering. Rule number one, that chefs need to season things smartly and not allow the customer to season it. That's the whole idea. Okay. Christina could sense his arrogance, but what Christopher did next made her furious. Rolling your eyes to the balcony while Gordon's tasting your dish, when we say we see everything, we mean it. That shrug Christopher gave was so disrespectful that only someone as cold as him would react that way. The audacity of this chef was incomparable to anyone else on the show. Anyway, let's discuss some more of what Christopher said in his AMA. While one Reddit user felt that Christina singled him out and picked on him on purpose, they wanted to know if Christopher felt the same way. And what Christopher wrote in response actually surprised me. He said that he didn't believe Christina tried to single him out and that she didn't pull any punches. He also went on to add that her story was very similar to his upbringing where he had to fight his way to reach where he was. Christopher was also grateful that she was tough on him since it helped him deliver a better performance. Well, I'm really glad he thinks this way. That's probably the reason why a few viewers are a fan of this guy. Like this user right here who blamed the camera angles and editing to portray Christopher in a negative light. They also claim that the producers only showed Christopher being disrespectful, but in truth, he was just frustrated. And what do you know, Christopher was ready to answer this as well. He thanked everyone and claimed that he had no hard feelings towards anyone. All that mattered to him was the journey ahead, and with a little luck and hard work, he hoped that everything would be great in the future. But what's your whole take on this whole camera angle issue? Do you really think Christopher rolling his eyes was all camera work? If that was the case, then why did Christina berate him? Would you blame the show's editors for his attitude? While you think about that, do you remember this next contestant from season 7 who made a huge mistake during a team challenge that left Chef Ramsay extremely furious? It's crazy how things turned out because Manny Washington might just be one of the nicest contestants to ever have been featured on MasterChef. Although he was an amateur in terms of cooking, many felt that Manny went home way too soon. One user wrote about his thoughts on season 7 and I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think all of these contestants did leave the show way before their time. Team challenges could be really difficult for some home cooks since they aren't trained professionals. They without any doubt have cooked for their family, but cooking for a family and doing so in a competition are very different. In a competition, the cooks get a certain amount of time to prepare the food, which puts a lot of pressure on them. Now, if Manny's mistake was because of pressure, we won't get to know that, but one thing I could say is that Chef Ramsay was extremely furious with him. But before I tell you exactly what happened, let me introduce you to what the team challenge was about. 15 chefs were divided into two teams and Manny was placed into the red one. Both teams had to cook for the Air Force veterans and were given an hour to cook and another one to serve. Now, enough of that, let's see exactly where Manny screwed up. When the serving began, the dishes were flying out from both kitchens. And with that, an equal number of problems landed on the red team's shoulders. Christina brought back a plate that had no mushroom bourbon sauce on it. How could they forget it? Because of this, Chef Ramsay was extremely annoyed. There's no sauce, there's no mushrooms. But that's what you're sending. Do we have any kind of respect what's going on? And before you know it, Christina did a crash landing on them by bringing in more plates. Three are raw, guys. They're raw. Oh, what was happening here? Chef Ramsay was furious, but when he learned that the steaks were sliced and served by Manny, he got even more irate. This was because serving raw food to people who keep us safe is extremely disrespectful. 
I expect you to take this serious. You save lives. These guys put their lives on the line. Manny, being a foreman himself, should have known better, and viewers jumped in as well to point out his mistakes. One YouTube user wrote that Manny was doomed the second that he cut the raw steak and sent it out to be served. I mean, couldn't Manny just see that the steaks were raw? Like, he was the one who sliced it and still decided to send it out. Now that's a really big mistake. Well, it's really sad to say that he had to leave the show early, but did you know that Manny took part in Food Network Star? Most of his fans were so excited to see him again. A Redditor even shared his excitement upon seeing familiar faces. And guess what? Manny placed in second. I'm glad he finally got the recognition he deserved. But what happened during Master Chef was definitely unforgivable. But here comes a contestant whose promises to excel ended up blowing in their face in a disastrous fashion. So, in the elimination test in episode 13, when she presented her ground pork patty right off the bat, Chef Ramsay was appalled. What the hell were you thinking? It's what I grew up with. So if it's that what you grew up with, then this should be mind-blowing. Zero on presentation. Let that set the stage for what's about to come. Because if we're talking flavor, well... Disgusting. Because that is a joke. Not impressed. Oh yeah, believe me, it completely deserved that thrashing. And I think one of your weakest performances in this competition. He also implied that she hadn't broken a sweat while making it. And we all know how important blood, sweat, and tears are for making art, right? You don't look like you've achieved much. I'm sure he had a lot more to say, but only managed to get this out. <laughs> now I'm gonna stop there. Joe, on the other hand, was furious. He chucked her plate into the trash like usual, like it had personally offended him, grumbling about how it was a waste of everyone's time. This is a great example of what garbage is. Well, she was definitely lucky she didn't get eliminated that night, and even luckier that Christian messed up in the final three. Another standout dish from the season is Trump's biggest fan, Max Kramer. The steaming pile of crap, I mean crepe and mascarpone layer cake he made resulted in one of the most iconic lines in the history of the show. It's like I've just gone to the doctors for a skin graft on my butt <laughs> yeah. and stuck it in caramel. Dude is the wordsmith of the century. If you ask me, I think the judges had an absolute riot over the dish. They couldn't stop laughing at how absurd it was. <laughs> Seriously, what was this? 15 crepes piled together like the Leaning Tower of Pastry? There's no sweetness. I don't get a lot of coffee flavor at all. I would be worried, actually, with what you made here. But I mean, if you're gonna do that, you may as well make it sweet, right? Or, well, have any flavor whatsoever. You might as well have stacked paper towels instead. However, can you take a wild guess what was worse than this crepe disaster? It was a shotgun wedding between good old beef and drum roll, please, strawberries. I made a peanut butter and jelly five spice spring roll and strawberry pieces and a sriracha jelly dipping sauce. Congrats, Shelly. That had to have been the stupidest thing I've said all day. Anyway, in Season 6, Episode 10's Elimination Challenge, our gorgeous diva Tommy gave the contestants the challenge of making an elevated dish with PB&J at its heart. And she immediately dove into the challenge by forgetting the main ingredients from the pantry. Shelly, what's up? Why are you shaking your head? I didn't get peanut butter and jelly. It's mind-boggling how she managed to dodge elimination after emptying two full baskets from the pantry while missing everything that was essential. She then found herself relying on the kindness of fellow competitors. Hital and Olivia generously offered her some last-minute support. I only have crunchy extra. I don't care, I'll take whatever. Thank you. However, what followed was not a stroke of improvised genius, but rather a mismatched attempt at creativity that was just plain revolting. Is this dish good enough to get yourself in the top 10? I'm really, really proud of my dish. The discord between the ingredients was unmistakable, leading Chef Ramsay to voice his discontent and regrets in the funniest way possible. That looks like a stuffed condom. Uh, it's just way, way off the mark. Yeah, it was a dish that was as strange and unappetizing as it sounded. But Shelly seemed bizarrely proud of it. Go figure. Basically, if you've watched this episode, you know that Sarah got kicked out because she talked back. There's absolutely no way her dish was worse than Shelly's though, period. Ground beef and strawberries do not go ever, ever. You're not gonna convince me, ever. So what's worse according to you? Mixing white chocolate with seafood or strawberries with meat? It's a damn shame the two were never on the same show at the same time. Anyway, while you think about that, I'm heading over to season four. 
There was a moment when Lynn's pink poo in the $5 Walmart bake sale elimination challenge fell drastically short of meeting the judge's expectations, both in terms of flavor and aesthetics. That's incredible. Are you serious? Their reaction was nothing short of astonishment as the dish came walking up. The presentation seemed to draw the harshest criticism, leaving the judges wondering if they were getting pranked and the real fish would be brought up any second now. What is it? It's a baked meringue, mashed raised strawberries on top and a banana puree. Calling it the worst dish served since the inception of the show, Chef Ramsay highlighted the million and one flaws that rendered this dish not just subpar, but downright nasty. Wall insulator with some strawberry or banana that your granddad left under his bed before he passed. On the other hand, Joe mocked him mercilessly, dangling the dish in front of him, saying, They raise you up so high, and then you fall. Emotional damage, right? After tossing it out like the garbage that it was, he grabbed the empty plate in order to show the complete absence of any redeeming qualities. Might be a memento for you to take home. God, I don't even know what to say here. But the criticism was valid and stemmed not just from the dish's horrid appearance, but also from its taste and overall execution. Eventually, Lynn found himself in the bottom three alongside James and Chrissy, ultimately getting eliminated in that episode. Raise your hand if that surprised you. Hmm, no takers? I figured. Now, this really reminded me of what happened in season 11, when the top 10 were faced with their greatest challenge yet. Chef Ramsay revealed a mystery box that had California's finest ingredients. That being Santa Barbara prawns, sea urchin, wasabi, avocado, and grapefruit. What's more, these weren't just any ingredients. They were a tribute to the legendary guest judge, Jonathan Waxman. All of you, please welcome the legendary Jonathan Waxman. During the cooking period, Joseph, unfortunately, found himself in some hot water, quite literally. He ended up throwing the prawns on the heat with a whopping 35 minutes still on the clock. Chef Ramsay made it clear, cooking the hero ingredient way too early was a recipe for disaster. This practically guaranteed Joseph a one-way ticket to the bottom three. These are already dry, they're overcooked. and they're, they're, they're overcooked, okay. and they're continuing to cook because this is hot. In a stroke of luck, Joseph managed to wrangle a few spare prawns from Anne and Lexi, but the situation had him rattled. The judges kept a watchful eye on Joseph's every move, assessing his frantic attempts to turn things around. He's cooked every prawn, and they're overcooked, they're like rubber. So he has to start again. Uh, but he somehow managed to stumble through making a prawn pasta with uni cream, as well as avocado, grapefruit, and uni in grapefruit ponzu. But don't let that pretty appetizing description fool you. It was awful. Owning up to his mistakes, he openly acknowledged that the dish fell far from what he had envisioned conceptually. Can I ask you one question? If you had to redo this dish, would you do it this way? No. And the judges were at a loss for words. Aaron's critique was blunt and to the point. Joseph had missed the mark entirely. Joseph, I'm sorry to be harsh, man, but you, you completely missed the boat on the message here with this task. It was so sloppy with no evident synergy between the ingredients. But it was Waxman's assessment that really stung the most. He essentially said that it lacked quintessential Californian charm. You know, the delicacy, the purity, the precision. He could only articulate his feelings as flummoxed. How you arrived at this result, I'm flummoxed. As for Joe, he decided to rip him apart in his usual style. It looks like a dump bucket. What a waste. Ouch. Just ouch. But sometimes, the challenges the contestants face are totally unexpected. Like what happened in Season 7, Episode 8's Elimination Challenge, when Chef Ramsay wheeled out some of the most appetizing proteins you can ever eat. I'm talking pig's ears, bull's testicles, chicken's feet, lamb tongue, and pork tail. Mmm, so, so good. Safe to say, these ingredients would need a ton of love to make them work. These are some of the cheapest and most underused cuts of meat. The bits that they can all be delicious if you cook them right. Anyway, with a tight 45 minutes on the clock, they dashed to the pantry for their awful ingredients. No, not awful, awful. Anyway, Diane took a shot at making menudo from her tripe, boldly tweaking it for a crispier punch. I've never cooked tripe before. I've tasted it before. Nope. So the line in the stomach. Yep. Amidst the judge's deliberation, Chef Ramsay's concern over Diane's dish became really apparent. And of course, he was right. Diana doesn't seem to know what she's doing. She hasn't got a grasp on that. I think she understands how bland that tripe is. Remember the infamous fossilized cornmeal chicken? But oh boy, did she fumble. Aiming to wow with her spicy flavors, she presented her tripe menudo jazzed up with corn and jalapenos. Where is it? 
I meant, I, like I said, Chef, I meant there's very small pieces. I see little speckles of white bits. Is that it? Yes, Chef. Like here? Yes, Chef. Chef Ramsay had to literally excavate the dish to find the tripe, only to discover it was as raw as the day that it was born. It's a really horrible, spongy. No, I can't even pull it. Since she had no idea how to fix the raw stomach lining, she simply minced it up into tiny pieces, buried it into her broth, and tried to play it cool, but Chef Ramsay wasn't a fool. I took the pieces and I cut them because they were very chewy and I didn't want you to get a mouthful of just chew. I was just trying to hide the fact that it was raw. He called her out for the cardinal sin of the night, trying to mask the undercooked meat. And it wasn't even a good cover-up job. Sadly for her, her half-baked effort wasn't enough to keep her from getting kicked off the show. And she kind of deserved it. But here comes another mystery box that gave the contestants quite a tough time. I'm talking about season 8 when a master chef branded surprise awaited the cooks. Think chicken breasts, carrots, potatoes, ground beef, canned tomatoes, and the like, a comforting array of familiar ingredients. The basics. You, you couldn't level the playing field any more than we have tonight. Right, so Mark, confident as ever, let out a victory cry. Yeah! Nailed that! But hold up, because that celebration might have been a bit premature. After the frantic hour of cooking, Chef Ramsay declared the spotlight was on three cooks, whose creations had completely missed the mark. Tonight, you three stood out for all the wrong reasons. Way to turn those smiles upside down, huh? Like you saw, Mark was on the chopping block. His breakfast ensemble of pancakes, hash browns, and fruit lovingly drenched in caramel sauce turned out to be a nauseating experience for Christina Tossi, and she had the biggest sweet tooth in the room. It has problems, it's undercooked. Seeing raw apple and raw banana just stuck on the plate is like the finesse isn't there. She nearly gagged at the sight of Mark's undercooked pancake and turned her nose up at the fruit that he'd butcher. To add insult to injury, she compared his chunk of hash browns to, well, a piece of meat. It's underwhelming and disappointing to say the least. So while the others moved to the safety of the balcony, Mark, Sam, and Heather weren't as fortunate. Their chance for a do-over arrived swiftly, a shot to learn from the judges' feedback. With familiar ingredients and a tighter time frame, they faced a crucial choice. They could either recreate their flawed dishes to display some improvement, or craft a new creation to reassert their standing in the competition. As Sam and Heather hustled to prepare their own dishes, Sam opted for meatloaf and potatoes once again. On the other hand, Heather whipped up some chicken kebabs and fries, while Mark appeared to have taken a more leisurely approach. He was his usual overconfident self. Come on, Mark, pick it up. Um, I've been in this position in my life before. Pressure is my middle name. We'll see, buddy. Observing from the safety of the balcony, the other competitors commented on his languid movements, jokingly referring to his actions as slow-mo. Meanwhile, Christina paid a visit to Mark's station, curious about his culinary game plan. This is an elimination challenge. If you aren't pushing yourself, I'm not interested in having you in this kitchen anymore. Oh, ho, ho, she was pissed. Mark explained his twist on the breakfast dish, mentioning his addition of chocolate chips to the pancakes and his attempt at baking eggs in the oven. However, Christina, who was getting real tired of his constant football references, couldn't help but ask why he was sticking with that gimmick of all things. Mark, who was completely unfazed, blamed it on his athletic background. But Christina didn't see that athleticism in his relaxed pace and had no choice but to interpret it as a lack of investment or care in the competition. I don't know if you guys felt this way, but to me, it looks like Mark doesn't care. And well, she wasn't wrong. Some time later, during Chef Ramsay's visit to Heather's station, he offered some crucial advice. He cautioned her against the risk of dry chicken breast when cooked on skewers. However, Mark chimed in with a cocky comment, advising Heather to follow his lead and ignore the feedback. You know what you can do, Heather? Just do what I do and ignore them. Yes, of course, oh wise one. Don't know if he was trying to be funny or what, but Chef Ramsay wasn't having it. Young man. Is this a joke for you? Now we'll take it serious, we'll take I you over and off. Seriously. The balcony crew couldn't help but whisper in confusion. In a straight-to-camera moment, one contestant bluntly said that Mark didn't seem to care much about the competition, thinking that the whole world revolved around him. Mark thinks the world stops for him. Not today, baby. Mm -mm. Right-o, buckaroo. Later on, Chef Ramsay put Mark on the spot, asking if he felt like he'd improved. Mark confidently served up his sweet chocolate chip pancakes and baked eggs, claiming that he stepped up his game big time. But Chef Ramsay wasn't buying that crap. He pressed Mark, wondering if this was truly his A game or if he was just going through the motions. That is tough to look at. 
but Mark stuck to his guns, insisting that it was his best, leaving Christina and the entire crew visibly taken aback. I successfully completed the 28th sweep, but I think I scored a touchdown. However, this attempt didn't quite land very well, as someone from the balcony disdainfully called him a douche. Chef Ramsay's assessment of Mark's food had both positive and probing aspects. While acknowledging its pleasant taste and beautiful cooking, Chef Ramsay questioned Mark's time management, noting his last minute rush compared to Sam and Heather. My big question is, did you maximize those 45 minutes? But with 90 seconds left, just waltzed up, put your plate down. When Christina tasted Mark's breakfast, she noted its proper cooking, but expressed doubt about whether chocolate chip pancakes and baked eggs alone would be enough to secure victory. However, in a dramatic reveal, the famous chef's announcement initially hinted at Sam facing elimination. But it turned out to be a fake out. Both Sam and Heather received the green light to head upstairs, securing their safety for another round. However, the same wasn't true for Mark. Mark, tonight's second attempt of your American breakfast wasn't good enough. Ramsey delivered the news that Mark's dish fell short, lacking the desired passion and hunger. I personally don't think you are quite ready to become America's next master chef. Of course, he was personally offended. I mean, who in their right mind challenges Chef Ramsay at his own game? But finally taking the critique gracefully, Mark thanked the judges, removed his white apron, and left the competition. Well, what happened in Season 4, Episode 5 was the absolute epitome of that. The challenge was that the contestants had to form teams and whip up a feast for a bunch of pint-sized food critics. Now, Jordan took the reins as the captain of the blue team, and was tasked with satisfying the taste buds of an entire elementary school. I'm sure all of you with kids can understand how tall of a task that is. In his lineup, he recruited Adriana, Kathy, Howard, Johnny, Savannah, Eddie, James, and Chrissy. Looking like a dream team, right? Well, on paper you'd think so. Anyway, what exactly was their mission, you ask? It was to create a menu that included turkey meatballs with pasta, green beans, and an apple crisp for dessert. Sounds delicious, right? But wait, 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 hold on. Even before things really got going, Chef Ramsay had some major doubts. How many meatballs per portion? We'll probably be right, right around two. If it's going to be so short, we'll check the balls. So two balls. Yeah. I mean, feeding 300 kids? That's a whole lot of meatballs. We're talking about a thousand or more, minimum. Chef Ramsay knew that there was no way a bunch of amateurs could figure that out, especially with a time crunch looming over them. 600 yeah. meatballs are gonna make? 600 meatballs. Oh my god. The pressure was on, the clock was ticking, and you couldn't help but wonder, would the blue team somehow be able to pull off this miracle? Well, I wouldn't be talking about it right now if they did, would I? The blue team stumbled right out of the gate, starting fashionably late. Guys, we just started making meatballs. 20 more to get to 600 meatballs. And amidst the chaos, Chrissy, with some kind of culinary sixth sense, saw the impending catastrophe as well. The time it's taken us making all these meatballs is just stupid. I mean, that's not a superpower or anything, it's just basic knowledge a chef should have. Or like, basic math skills. Hopefully those kids were being taught better than them. Meanwhile, the judges, who were eagerly awaiting a feast, were dumbfounded by the sluggish progress of the blue team. More than 600 meatballs were on the line, and the team's sluggish speed wasn't exactly moving things along. As the clock kept ticking, the blue team found themselves in a very tough situation where they shockingly couldn't make all those meatballs. And in a desperate attempt to salvage this sinking ship, a tactical shift was in order and it needed to come fast. We need to start diversing and someone step up and take responsibility. Meanwhile, Chef Ramsay was completely livid. With every passing minute, his tolerance dwindled further and further. And that's when Jordan came into the picture, and well, he had a weird solution. In a light bulb moment, he decided to switch gears and whip up some meat sauce instead. We're just gonna do a meat sauce. Don't even, hey, you don't need to roll them anymore. But guess what? Things were about to get real saucy. With barely a minute left on the clock, the green beans were still having some major issues. One minute to go. Bean salad, I need it ASAP. But they were really just a symptom of the bigger issues at hand. In the grand scheme of these unfortunate events, a trifecta of poor decisions, a dash of terrible teamwork, and a generous sprinkle of abysmal leadership, the teammates crumbled under the pressure like never before. However, what happened in this next episode will make you question everything you know about the basics of cooking duck. Okay, so stick with me for a second because Sean and Katie had their sights set high. Together, they decided to whip up scallops for the appetizer and duck breast for the main course. And let's be real, these proteins are no walk in the park at the best of times. They're both real fickle in terms of timing. 
But, well, how else could they prove their worth? So these contestants decided to go all in with this huge risk, hoping for some huge rewards on the other end of this challenge. So Junie took the helm for the blue team, while Julia commanded the red team. This was a strategic move that added an extra layer of unpredictability to the kitchen showdown. And once they stepped into the cooking tent, it was game on. The planning commenced and things got real strategic real quick. Julia faced a bit of resistance to her menu ideas initially. But like a true captain, she held her ground and rallied her team's support. Now, Chef Ramsay was on a mission to check the red team's progress. Little did he know he was about to uncover a disaster the likes of which he'd only seen on Kitchen Nightmares before. Stop! Turns out the team had seasoned the duck before cooking it, a move that even the rookiest of rookies know spells disaster. Salt pulls moisture out of things after all. And Chef Ramsay's fury reached new heights when he figured out what they'd done. We never season them until you cook them. Because when you hit the pan, there's going to be watery. Would the red team recover from this seasoning setback, or would they serve up a ducking disaster? Well, you'll need to wait for an upcoming video of mine to find out. But for now, nothing could prepare me for this bizarre wait. Get a cloth and dry them. Get rid of the seasoning quickly. Yeah, it was one of those kind of moves that would make Chef Ramsay question his life choices. And not surprisingly, what happened next was truly shocking. Blue team, we're all over the place. No one's communicating, and the captain's disappeared. Meanwhile, over on the blue team, it seemed like they too were on a mission to test Chef Ramsay's patience right from the start. And yeah, their menu idea raised more than a few eyebrows. Put your hands in the air if you've ever seen an orange zested mash in any restaurant anywhere in the world. The famous chef even called their idea downright foolish before the blue team had to do some serious menu soul searching. He demanded better ideas, prompting them to reshuffle their entire meal plan in a race against the clock. So what do you think happened? Would the blue team rise from the ashes of their initial blunder, or was Chef Ramsay about to declare a culinary state of emergency? Huh, just when you thought the blue team had weathered the storm, turns out they went all in for yet another culinary tempest. The party have sat down, and the puree's raw. Blue team, we're all over the place. Yup, they were all set to serve a puree, but the pureeing part wasn't exactly flawlessly executed. As if that wasn't enough, Junie walked in with a whole plate of garlic mashed potatoes which were equally time consuming and, dare I say, uninspiring. Meanwhile, Shanika tried to steer the ship in the right direction, offering some guidance of her own, but Junie clung to his garlic-laden dream with as much stubbornness as he could possibly muster. In Junie's world, the garlic mashed potatoes were the pinnacle of wedding feast perfection. I mean, from my perspective, I'd think it would put off the bride and groom from kissing each other, but you do you, man. Anyway, Chef Ramsay didn't have the patience to wait and watch. He stepped in once again and let the blue team have it. How does that become a stunning mash? What's more, upon learning Shanika's wisdom, Chef Ramsay urged the team to follow her lead. And yeah, Juni eventually conceded, but that didn't mean that he didn't find himself at a crossroads. The stakes were very high, and Chef Ramsay had a crucial decision to make. You are not going to captain this team any longer. Have a meeting and somebody step up and run this team. If not, I'm going to run it. In a dramatic turn of events, the famous chef stripped Juni of his rank. Taylor immediately stepped into the role with clear vocalization of ideas and strategic direction. That was her signature style in action. It was a clear contrast to Juni's mismanagement. Eventually, the blue team, under Taylor's guidance, managed to salvage the situation and finish things off on a high note. However, let's be honest, victory eluded them, leaving them with a taste of both redemption and the bitter reality of a culinary near miss. So there you have it, Times contestants cheated on Master Chef. Do you know any other moments where home cooks resorted to cheating and got caught by the judges? Let me know in the comments section down below. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. If you want to keep the discussion going, make sure to check out my channel's Discord server for free. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here since it's even crazier.